Here, I'll show you how to make a VLOOKUP that returns the minimum, maximum, or average value from a list. After that, I'll show you how to do the same thing using a more complex yet robust formula that combines the index and match functions. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. All right, here I've got a very simple list for our VLOOKUP, some number values here for the min, max, and average, and color values over here that we would like to return. And to do this, we're going to use just a combination of a couple simple functions. So the basic VLOOKUP is going to be the same as any other VLOOKUP. The only difference is we're going to change the lookup value itself. So if you want to find the maximum value from this list, you must first find out what the maximum value is. So let's write that right here with a simple equals max function. And we just select the numbers, hit enter. And now I know that I'm looking for in this column, the number five. So this has become our lookup value. And that's the trick to this. It doesn't matter how we get our lookup value. You can get it in as complex a way as you want. Once you've got it, once you've made it, make it in a separate cell like this, then just copy it, hit escape. Let's clear that guy now and make your VLOOKUP. And the first argument, the lookup value, is where we paste what we just copied. That's the trick for doing this. Now, there are a couple things to watch out for, especially when we get to average, but this is the basic premise for it. So now that we have our lookup value, we do comma, table array. Well, it's this table right here. And make sure that the leftmost column of your table array is where you used your max function right here because you're looking for the value in column A. So column A must be your leftmost column in this table array. But that's just standard VLOOKUP stuff because remember, it always looks up the value in the leftmost column of the table array. Now, comma, column index number, two in this case because we want a color which is in the second column of the table index. And range, false because I want an exact match. Close up the parentheses, hit enter, and that's it. The maximum value, five returns orange. Perfect. Now let's do this one with typing everything in the VLOOKUP function. So once you get more comfortable with all of these functions, it's a bit easier to combine them. Just start typing the VLOOKUP. For my lookup value, min, that's going to return the minimum value from this right here. And then I use that as my lookup value, very easy comma for the table array, select that, comma, column index number two, comma, range lookup, false. Close the parentheses, and there you go. So red for the minimum value, perfect. So when the lookup value is very easy, just one little function like that, then you can go ahead and do that. In other examples, I've used a little bit more complex text extraction functions that have nested text extraction functions. I would not build those by default here. So the moment this gets complex, build it in a separate cell. But here, no problem. Now let's move to the average. First, I'm gonna build it, and then I'm gonna show you what you have to watch out for. So we have the average function. You, I'm certain, know about it by now, equals average. We select these numbers, hit enter, and it's going to give us the average, which in this case is three, and that perfectly matches with blue. So we can see that we are going to get blue back, but that's because everything is very easy here. In a moment, you will see that that can be tricky. So let's make this right now, equals VLOOKUP average table array, column index number, range lookup. What do we want for range lookup? Well, we could do false in this example, and that'll work just fine. An exact match. We get blue. But what if our average is not exactly an exact match? So let's have the average out here so we can see it. What if, let's say, this is 12? Hmm. Well, when it's 4.6, this throws an error. Whatever could have happened? Well, it can't locate 4.6 over here. So that's not going to work. All right, so what do we do with that? We can change false to true because true 
is an approximate match. And that means if it can't find the number, it's going to return the next highest value, which should be 3. So let's see what happens. True for that. Hit Enter. And we get blue. Everything seems to work OK. But you have to be very careful. When you use true here, you must sort the numbers in ascending order. And it even reminds you. I'm going to hit backspace. Approximate match. It's a bit off the screen, but I'll read it here. It says, the values in the first column of table array must be sorted in ascending order. So that means smallest to largest. If you don't do that, you can run into problems. And what you can do for that is to select the data set. It's a small one, so this will be easy. Just right click and go to sort, sort smallest to largest. Or what's better if you have a larger data set is move all of your other data away from it. The only reason I have it right next to this data set is to fit it on the screen a little bit better. So you'd move it away and you sort it so the numbers are smallest to largest. And that's going to make sure that you don't run into any problems with the average function being used as a lookup value. So what's going to happen, as you've already seen, is we get 4.6 for the average. It can't find 4.6. It goes for the next highest, which is 3, which returns blue. Now let's go for a reverse sort, and let's see what would happen there. So we're going to sort largest to smallest. Now the average goes from blue to red, which is not what it should be. So don't be fooled if sometimes having a missorted data set or an unsorted data set gives you the correct result. It doesn't mean it's always going to give you the correct result. So make sure you have them sorted smallest to largest if you want to use true for the last argument, the range lookup argument here. And that's really the only thing you have to be careful of. Everything else is quite self-explanatory. No problems. You use the min, max, and average function, and you're good to go. But let's move on to the next worksheet now, where I'm going to show you a more robust way to do this. And we're going to use the index and the match function for that. So go to that worksheet tab. The reason this is more robust, notice we have now three columns, is because we can use a middle column value for our lookup value and still return a column to the left of it, and even the actual column with the value and the column to the right. So we get more flexibility. It's more robust. But of course, as usual, things get a bit more complex when we do that. And you can see this data is down here below the data set, so it will be easier to sort without any difficulty. Let's delete that, and let us make this a little bigger so I can show you the index match function. Now, this is not going to be an intro tutorial for these functions, so when I build this guy, it may seem confusing, but watch the index and match tutorials that I have previously given, and you'll get a nice walkthrough of every single little step. Here, I'm going to go a little bit fast. And we're going to start off building the index function. Index function is great. You simply give it an array of data, and then you tell it which cell you want to get data from. So I've given it this table right here. Everything is good. Now, for the next argument, I choose the row from which I would like to get data. So I have to figure out which row I want to get the data from. And that's where we use the match function. The match function is kind of like a VLOOKUP, except instead of returning a value, it's going to return a relative position. For the lookup value, we do it just like we did in the last example. I'm going to use the max function, and I'm going to select the entire value column. Make sure it has as many rows as the table you selected for index has. That's very, very important. Close that up, comma. Now we're at the lookup array for match. Where do you want to look up this max value? Well, right here in the value column. So we just repeat that. And which match type would you like? Just like the VLOOKUP, we have a few options. We can do less than, which finds the largest value that is less than or equal to the lookup value. In this case, the lookup value must be placed in ascending order. So just like we just talked about with the average, we have greater than finds the smallest value that is greater than or equal to the lookup value. In this case, lookup value sorted in descending order. Or exact match. It doesn't matter what order it's in. It just has to find exactly what you're looking for. We'll stick with that, which is 0. Now I'm going to close up match. And this will tell me in which row 
the maximum value is. Then it will spit that back to the index. Now let's hit a comma and let's tell the index from which column we would like to get data. I want to get part, which is the first column. So I put a one and you're good to go. It looks complex, but once you understand how to use the match function, the index part is actually the simplest part. So let's hit enter and we see that max is ASC-A-5. Now let us make this so it's very easy to copy it over and get the value and the color. We are going to select this and hit F4 to put dollar signs around it. So it is an absolute range reference. And that means that when we copy the formula over, this will not change. It'll stay the same. And we want to do the same for B2 to B6 and B2 to B6. Control enter, perfect. Copy it to the right and we will update it all the way at the end here. I want a value from column two now, okay. And I want a value from column three, perfect. So here is the final version for the max. And you can see that the min, it's going to be the same thing, just with a min right here, except for I did not use absolute cell references when building this one. But everything else is the same except for the min function. Once again, the difference comes into play where you have the average. So we have the average right here, and we use the average function, of course, but then we have a one down here instead of a zero. So if we delete this, back it up, comma, one is a less than, largest value that is less than or equal to the lookup value. So just like we did for the average for the VLOOKUP. And you want to make sure that everything is sorted correctly so that you get the correct results all the time. Otherwise, if we grab this guy and I just click in here and go sort largest to smallest, and then I make it so there is not an exact match, let's say this is 12, you are going to get red for the average, which is incorrect. So once again, sorting is important. Now the index and the match and even the VLOOKUP can seem quite confusing, but the main thing to get from this tutorial is simply that all you have to do is to get the correct lookup value, and you can do that using any set of functions and formulas that you want. And then just make sure that if you're using something like an average, which might not have an exact match, that you use true for the last argument and have your data sorted in ascending order. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.